What are we doing? Are we vlogging? I don't want to be in the vlog. Oh my god, if that's, that better not be where we're going. Hey guys, today is Saturday, March 25th. And today, my plan was to actually go and check out the Nikki Blackadder pop-up shop. So if you guys are familiar, she's just a YouTuber um, that talks about a lot of fitness stuff and she was actually launching her own athletic apparel line in collaboration with Gymshark. So the pop-up shop started at 10 and my idea was to get there around like 3 o'clock, you know, maybe go in, buy a sweatshirt, maybe meet her. You know, living in New York, I should probably expect long lines, but for some reason I just didn't think there would be that much interest. But we got there and there's a huge line just wrapped around the entire block. Pretty short. I can't even believe this is the line. I can't even believe it. We went up to the person in the front of the line and we said, how long have you been waiting? They had been waiting there since 9.30 this morning. No chance we were getting in. So that kind of sucked. But um, it was just cool to just go there and see it for what it was, even if we couldn't go inside. So that was my afternoon. <laughs> All right, so the topic of today's video is going to be reverse dieting. So you might have heard this term thrown around a little bit, or maybe you've never heard it at all. But basically, in a traditional diet, what happens is you eat less and less each week, and you try to lose weight. So if you hit a plateau, you eat a little bit less, so on and so forth. Now with reverse dieting, it's basically the opposite. So what you do is you're actually adding in calories each week with the goal that your weight stays the same. So even though you're not gonna be losing weight, you still might see a reduction in inches on your body. Um, so you will be getting smaller even though your weight should be stagnant, if that makes sense. So the goal of reverse dieting is actually pretty simple. What you wanna do is basically figure out your metabolic ceiling. So every week you're gonna increase the amount of food that you eat and you want your weight to stay the same. Now once you've reached you know, a week or two where your weight is definitely up and it's not gonna come back down, like you've actually gained a pound or so, that's when you know you've reached your metabolic ceiling. So metabolic ceiling is just how much food can you eat before you actually gain weight. And what a lot of people don't realize is that it's a lot higher than they think. The benefit of this is that when you want to lose fat, sure, you could pick that arbitrary number like, I'll just start eating 1,400 calories, but if you know how much you can actually eat, then you can subtract, you know, a few hundred calories from that. The idea is that you want to start cutting or going through your fat loss phase with the highest amount of calories possible. Because what's going to happen as you lose weight is you're eventually going to hit plateaus as your metabolism adapts. So once you hit the plateau, the only thing you can do is either increase exercise or decrease calories, right? And that can't go on forever. So that's why it's so important to start cutting from the highest amount of calories possible, AKA reverse diet. <laughs> so I also really just want to dispel a common myth that is you can eat more and lose weight. There's a lot of people out there that say like, oh, I increased my calories and like I lost weight. but. You have to understand how this works, right? So if I'm starting my reverse diet at 1200 calories and I'm adding in 50 calories a week, I might be losing weight for like six weeks or so. You're not gonna actually stop losing weight until you hit your maintenance calories. So in theory, sure, you could be eating more and losing weight, but if you're you know, eating 1200 calories and then you're eating 1300 and then you're eating 1400, you know, you're still way under maintenance. So I hope that makes sense. Because um, a lot of people just think reverse diet, woo, I can just like go ham and just like eat whatever I want. But really it's kind of a controlled increase of calories. So with a reverse diet, the most important thing is that you have to go slowly. So there's a few situations in which reverse dieting is ideal. So one is definitely for people coming out of some kind of competition prep. So typically in a competition prep, you're trying to get very lean. And in order to do that, you're decreasing your calories a lot. So by the end of a competition prep, it's like not uncommon that like a female might only be eating 1200 or 1100 calories. So yeah, that's really low. And basically your body gets adapted to that level of calories. So after their prep, if they go right back into eating 1500 calories, their body's gonna store it as fat because their metabolism has become so slow. So the point of a reverse diet is to kind of rebuild your metabolism. 
So for example, every week you want to add in, you know, additional 50, 60 calories. And you're going to be adding those calories back from mostly carbs and then a little bit of fat. But protein will always stay the same no matter what. So in order to really conduct like a proper reverse diet, what you want to do is figure out your maintenance calories and then start a little bit under that. So every week you're going to bump up your calories by about 10 to 12 carbs, 1 to 2 grams of fat. You want to weigh yourself pretty regularly so that on average your weight over the course of a week stays the same. So the second scenario where I think a reverse diet would help someone is just if you want to lose fat, but you really have no clue what your metabolic ceiling is, right? So if you're going to start cutting, you want to start with the highest amount of calories possible. Um, and another benefit of this strategy is just say, pretend you do know how many calories you can eat. Um, what you really want to do is try to kind of push the limits on that. So with a reverse diet, you increase your calories every week you know, trying to uh, add in more and more and hope that your body will just kind of adapt and not store them as fat, that's kind of what you're after. So I also wanted to give you just some background, you know, like, do I practice what I preach or am I just like talking at you? <laughs> but basically in January, I decided to start working with a macro coach who sets my macros for me and he also gives me programming. You know, over Christmas, I did what most people do. I kind of just like got off track, just ate whatever I wanted. So when I reached out to him in January, I was like, I am ready to go. I'm ready to just like diet down, fat loss all the way. Give me my macros, like let's do it. And his response to me was, well, I think we're gonna start with a reverse diet. So I actually started at 1400 calories, which if that sounds low, it's because like it is low. I was like hungry on that. So I started at 1400 calories. I've been adding in um, about 50 calories a week. So as you can figure out, it's like a really slow process. Right now I'm up to about like 17 or 1750 in terms of calories. And this could probably go on for a few more weeks, you know, maybe like a few more months. Um, so the stages that I've been through were kind of like, I started the reverse diet, you know, a little bit hungry, but everything was fine. Then within like a month, I was at this level where I just never felt hungry and I felt great. Like everything was great. Um, but I have reached the point now where I'm just like, all right, like summer's coming up. I'll keep you guys updated on that progress as well. So if you guys are also interested in like how I chose a coach or like why I decided to work with a coach, I can make another video on that. But my coach actually lives in Canada, so it's all remote. It's basically online, in case you were wondering. So I hope you guys found today's chat useful. If you're confused on anything, just drop me a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. And now we're gonna head over to the kitchen and make some food. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how I make cauliflower rice. So this is just some cauliflower I've put in a saucepan. And as you can see, I've put it in the food processor so it's really thin, um, almost like rice. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the stove top as is and stir it around for a little bit until we can get some of the moisture out of it. So this is about 10 minutes cooking on medium heat. And as you can see, it's starting to get crusty on the bottom, almost like it's sticking to the pan. Um, this is basically what we want. You kind of want it to get that caramelization, crustiness, almost as if you were cooking some hash browns. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw in an egg. I'm going to use a little bit of this olive oil spray right here, that way the egg doesn't stick to the pan. Um, so normally I don't track macros on this because it's so insignificant. So just spray a little bit in your pan, like that. So what I like to do once I have the egg in the pan is to basically just scramble it until it's almost cooked. And then once it is, I'll mix it in with the cauliflower. So once the egg starts coming together like this, it's not fully cooked, but it's good enough we're gonna mix it all back in with the cauliflower mixture and just kind of scrape the pan a little bit to get some of that uh, crustiness off so you can add some mixed vegetables into here as well or other ingredients but I'm just going to be adding two tablespoons of Kikoman uh, reduced sodium soy sauce and that's gonna go right in the pan so the soy sauce has been added right here and what you'll notice is that as soon as you put it in the pan all of the stuff that was really stuck to the bottom now easily scrapes off so we're just gonna wanna go around the pan, make sure we're scraping. So the most important part of this recipe is to let that plain cauliflower steam in the pan for about five to 10 minutes before you add anything to it. Um, because if you don't, by the time you add the soy sauce, you're just gonna have a big pile of mushy, wet cauliflower. 
So while I'm letting this cook just a little bit more in the pan, all I'm going to add is salt and pepper. I found some leftover scallions in the fridge, so I'm going to go ahead and add those now. Um, and that should provide a little bit of crunch. And as you can see, this is really steaming up nicely. So in about another minute, I'm going to take this off the heat and put it into a bowl. So here is the final product. As you can see, I've just put it in a little Pyrex bowl right here. Thanks for watching, you guys. I don't know if you could tell that my cats were jumping all over and my tripod was like, ah! <laughs> my cat is right here, just creeping. Just creeping. <laughs> so if you guys liked today's video, make sure to drop me a comment below or subscribe. Um, I'm also gonna link my Instagram right here in case you wanna creep on what I'm eating this week. <laughs> and I will catch you guys in the next one.